With more of us buying devices that are connected to Wi-Fi and more and more of us working from home, having fast and reliable Wi-Fi has never been more important than it is now. But knowing how to get the most performance out of your Wi-Fi can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming, but it really doesn't need to be. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can get the most performance out of your Ubiquiti Unify system. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video, and today I'm gonna to give you my best practices to get the most out of your Ubiquiti Unify Wi-Fi, because who doesn't want more performance. So today I'm going to take you through my recommended settings that I apply anytime I am doing a brand new Unify install. Now I am not a Wi-Fi expert, certainly not a radio frequency expert. I wouldn't ever claim to be that sort of stuff. It's absolutely mind blowing to me. But these are just some of the settings that I find to work for me and work for all of the sites that I install. And these are the settings that I apply every time. Now we are going to be doing this on Unify equipment because that is very popular amongst a lot of you but pretty much all of these settings should be applicable to your own router if it is semi-decent and if it isn't replace it. But first, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators who want to learn a new skill or even brush up on some existing ones. All of their classes are specifically tailored for learning, meaning there is no ads, and they are always launching new premium classes to their existing library. You can choose from a wide range of categories and with Skillshare Premium, you get unlimited access so that you can learn at your own pace. Pace. I've recently been getting back into 3D printing again, so I've been taking a Skillshare original class called Introduction to 3D Printing, an easy start to your first 3D design by Lauren Slowick, which is helping me to really level up my 3D printing game. But they also have classes on Arduino, Internet of Things and networking, as well as so much more. The first 1,000 of you to click the link in the video description will get a free one month trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, so first of all, we are going to be working inside of the new UI because that is where things are gonna be headed in the future. But before we do that, there is one setting that we need to change in the current UI first, and that is to disable the auto optimize feature. So in the classic UI, head to settings and then into site and make sure auto optimize is set to off. Then to change from the old UI to the new UI, head into the user interface tab and select the the new UI option and hit apply changes and the page will then reload and it will take you into the new user interface. And don't worry, you can always revert to the old one if you prefer. From here, we now want to disable the smart AI features alongside the auto optimize feature that we just disabled so that they don't undo and interfere with some of the changes that we are about to make. These features are good in theory, but in practice, I don't think they are as good as manually dialing in the settings, which is what we are about to do. From here, you'll want to head back into settings and then go to advanced features and into Wi-Fi AI and make sure that the Wi-Fi AI option is disabled. That is going to stop the access point from thinking it knows better, which it doesn't, and interfering with our settings. With the AI features disabled, next we are going to set the transmission power. And the transmission power is usually set to auto on Unify access points, which generally translates into it being set as high. You would think that would be good, right? Max power, max performance. Well, actually it can often be beneficial to turn down the power of an access point, in particular on the 2.4 gigahertz network, which will often result in less noise. Have you ever seen on your phone sometimes when you are quite far away from an access point, it says that you're getting like three bars of signal, yet trying to load any web page is just like not happening. Well, that is often a result of the power being too high and it can trick your phone into thinking that the signal is better than it actually is. To change the transmission power on the left-hand menu, select Unify Devices, and then from there, select your access point, and then click on the radio tab, and find the drop-down box that says Transmit Power. And you're going to see two different sets of options here, one for the 2.4 gigahertz network, and one for the five gigahertz network. For the 2.4 gigahertz network, I would recommend setting this to medium, and for the five gigahertz network, you can set this to high. 
If you have multiple access points, then you may even want to set these to low and medium respectively, depending on the layout of your access points. Next up is one that I'm sure you've all heard of, and that is to set the Wi-Fi channel. 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz spectrum is a wide range of frequency, and a Wi-Fi channel is basically a smaller slice of that Wi-Fi spectrum that your device and access point operate on to send and receive data. But if your access point is on the same Wi-Fi channel as your neighbors or other devices' Wi-Fi channels, this can often cause quite a lot of noise and make it hard for your devices to be heard. So moving to a channel that is less congested can really help improve performance. But how do you know exactly which channel to move to? Unify actually has this really nice little tool built in called Site Survey, which scans the Wi-Fi spectrum in your area, and it tells you how noisy all of the channels are so that you can select the best one. Scroll down to the RF environment dropdown, then hit the scan button to start the survey. Be aware that this will disconnect all of your Wi-Fi clients for up to five minutes whilst this happens, so make sure to choose a suitable time when you can run this without being shouted at by your partner or kids. And once finished, you can see which channels are most suitable. The best channels to use are channels 1, 6 or 11 on the 2.4 GHz network and channels 36 or 44 on the 5 GHz network. So from your site survey results, try to choose the least noisiest channels out of those best suitable ones. You'll also see that we have something called channel width. Now I don't want to get into what channel width is here, but my recommendation for the channel and channel width are to stick to a 20 megahertz channel width for the 2.4 gigahertz network and for the 5 gigahertz network I would probably recommend using a channel width of 40 megahertz. You can also experiment with the 80 megahertz channel on the 5 gigahertz network but this can be a little bit less reliable so perhaps dial in all of the rest of the settings that we're going to cover here and then you can come back and experiment with the 80 megahertz width. So just a quick recap here, channels 1, 6 or 11 with a channel width of 20 MHz for the 2.4 GHz spectrum and channel 36 or 44 with a channel width of 40 MHz for the 5 GHz spectrum would be my recommendations. Next we move on to what I would call some quality of life improvements called meshing band steering and airtime fairness. And these three features are all found under the access point settings once again. And individually they are smaller, but when all of them are combined, they sort of add up to improve the Wi-Fi experience. Firstly, let's talk about meshing. If you have a single access point only, then you can go ahead and disable this feature safely. If you have multiple access points and they all have ethernet cables plugged into them and are wired, then you can also go ahead and disable the meshing feature too. The only case where you will want to keep this on is if you have multiple access points and they have no ethernet cables plugged in and so they communicate with each other over a wireless link. That is the only scenario where you will want to keep the meshing feature enabled. The next feature we have under that is the airtime fairness feature. And this is one that you're gonna actually need to experiment with a little bit. My recommendation would probably be to leave it off for now. And then once you've dialed in the rest of the settings, then I would come back and try and enable this feature and sort of see if it improves things for you. If you have a lot of Wi-Fi clients, then turning on the airtime fairness feature can definitely help improve performance, but it does kind of sacrifice how many clients you can have connected and and also it might impact the max throughput of those clients. So definitely something to try and um, experiment with and see if it helps your situation. Finally, we have band steering and I like to set this to prefer 5G. What this will do is that any of your devices that support and are capable of five gigahertz, the access point will kind of give them a little nudge and say, hey, are you sure you don't want to join the five gigahertz network? And I prefer to set this to prefer 5G because many of us will have tons Tons of smart home devices that only support 2.4 gigahertz. And so if we can offload as many five gigahertz network, 
uh, clients as we can to the five gigahertz network. This will free up some of the 2.4 gigahertz space so that it's not quite as congested. So that's it for the access point specific settings, but there are a couple of more that I want to check. Head over back into the controller settings and then select Wi-Fi and select your Wi-Fi SSID and hit edit. Inside there, scroll down and firstly disable high performance devices and also disable fast roaming. Further down from there, we have the 802.11 rate and beacon control menu and you can enable the DTIM override option and set this to three. Now, this is one that you will want to monitor afterwards, particularly if you have smart home devices which tend to be older and 2.4 gigahertz only, then this could be one to keep an eye on. Setting this to three can yield some really good battery life improvements on iOS and Android, and it shouldn't cause issues with your other Wi-Fi equipment, but if it does, just simply revert this setting. My recommendation here would be to enable this on your main SSID, and if you have a separate SSID for your smart home devices, then you can leave it as the default setting on that particular SSID. SSID. And that leads me nicely into my final recommendation, and that is to have a separate SSID for your smart home devices, and this comes with a number of benefits. Number one, as we just saw, you can control the individual setting to be more suitable for each SSID depending on which devices are connected to it. It's also useful for being able to easily block that entire SSID from accessing the internet where it's possible to do so. And finally, it helps keep your network organized and more structured, especially when you start to gather more and more smart home or Wi-Fi devices. And that is my most recommended and best practice settings for applying to your Unify Wi-Fi setups. Like I mentioned, I go through and apply these to every single Unify install that I do. And I think if you do these, you should have a much more reliable and fast Wi-Fi experience. And that is never a bad thing, right? You can never have too much of that. If you think I missed anything or I didn't cover here, make sure to drop them in the comments down below. We can all benefit from them and we can all learn the dark art of Wi-Fi together. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.